Hey guys, so my name is Jen and this is my first vlog ever, which is super exciting. So I want to discuss today Dirty Pretty Things by Michael Fondit. So for those of you who are equally as in tune with Tumblr drama and news and everything as I am, um, you might have heard of Michael Fondit before. He runs a pretty popular Tumblr blog along with his um, lover, Lang Leave, who is also in two books called Lullabies and Love and Other Misadventures. That's how I originally heard about Michael Fondit, is I fell in love with this blog. Also Michael Fondit's blog is snippets of poetry, pictures that capture really broad scenic views, anything really captures beauty in like a snapshot. He first started advertising his book, Dirty Pretty Things, on his blog not that long ago, maybe a year ago, um, and I had been following it for two years already. I already read Lang Leaves, Love and Misadventures, and the year after this was published, I had to have it. I asked for this for Christmas, and at that time, they weren't actually selling them in stores yet. They were mass produced not that long ago, maybe early March, and finally placed into Barnes & Noble bookstores all over the country. But for me to actually get this, I actually had to order this, and it printed personally, so it's Kind of cool to have my own personal copy of a book. Uh, it definitely smells like personal book smell, which is great. I hesitated to actually write in this one because I've written all over Love and Most Adventures because it's so new and so personal. So Dirty Pretty Things is a collection of Michael Fonda's poetry and short stories, but mostly poetry about, well, the dirty pretty things of love. A lot of it is a little on the rough side, as in I wouldn't give this book to my grandmother, or my kids, or a teacher, or really anybody who would judge me too much, but it's really good. It discusses kind of the really raw sexual tension between two new lovers that are meeting, lovers that are ending their relationship, the raw sexual tension running through every single relationship ever. He's a pretty sexual dude, which is kind of great because the woman he meets whether fictitious or real, are also pretty sexual beings. That's good for him because I don't know if he could function in a normal, non-sexual way, according to this book. Don't let the sexual tendencies and everything in the book discourage you from actually reading it for a romantic novel and not just erotica. Through the sexual tension and sexual actions, he really does discuss kind of the raw emotional side of what's mean to be completely open to your lover or submissive or anything like that. And it's not all sexual. There's some definitely cuter ones in here. Let me see if I can find some. The kiss. Crashing waves on an empty beach. The rhythm of our hearts. Two drowning lovers lost at sea. My lips adrift in yours. Like, aww. There's also like really depressing things in here too. The saddest truth. The saddest truth is realizing you have fallen madly in love with what can never be. Yeah, see, and then there's something like this. Rainy afternoons. I love spending rainy afternoons in bed getting wet. Yeah, really sexual stuff here. And that's like PG-13 compared to a couple of the other ones. One poem, though, that he advertises along with the book is called Curious Girl, which I will find. Thank God for appendix. So this one poem, he advertises a long piece of it. Yeah, so it's short. This is the main poem he advertises with Dirty Pretty Things on his blog. I have seen this poem a million times, and this is the poem that originally got me interested in his work. Curious Girl. She was a curious girl who loved the smell of old books, chasing butterflies, and touching herself under the covers. A little, little scandalous, a little scandalous, but like in a good way. It makes you intrigued. That's not something you would totally expect, which is what I kind of like. From him. He has these lines that you read and you're just like, dude, you know? And that's awesome. He does have a couple short stories in here. They all involve extracurricular adult activity. And so I'm not going to read them for you, but I highly suggest them. They capture characters so quickly and you kind of understand the mindset. There's not really a storyline to it, however, there are two lovers that he talks about specifically. One, I assume is Langley, because he's completely infatuated with her, and you can just tell on the blog, they produce each other's stuff, they promote each other's things. The introduction was written by Langley, all about how much he loves her, and she loves him. Their love is a little, little sickening for those 
who don't have a stable relationship, but cute if you do. So that is one of the storylines. Another storyline was an ex-lover called Sophie. Although later on you find out that something tragic has happened between them and they just cannot recover. And there's a great short story in here describing how his love is kind of lost and all of a sudden instead of seeing Sophie in his eyes, he just sees a girl. I don't want to give too much away, but it's definitely one of the better short stories, I think. Some would argue that because of very explicit content, this is not necessarily a lit for adolescence. However, I would be hesitant to call it anything else. I know that maybe he didn't write it specifically for teenagers, but he has to keep in mind if his main form of advertisement is on Tumblr, whose ages are primarily 13 to 25 year olds, it's going to be read by 13 to 25 year olds. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm personally in the opinion that we should be teaching more sexual subjects earlier on so we can get girls more comfortable with their sexuality and tell them it's okay to be promiscuous and do whatever. It's also okay not to be promiscuous. Either way, the raw emotions have to be there if you're in a romantic relationship, which is what exactly what Dirty Pretty Things kind of uncovers. Another reason why people might not think this is a young adult book is because there is currently a trend on Tumblr to buy the book and if you're female, take pictures with it with strong sexual undertones, which is what no person under 18 should be doing. Personally, I think it's a great advertising ploy for Michael Fonda, who whenever he sees it, um, he just reblogs it or asks people to submit it to him. Wonderful advertising. I know this is not something that parents would give their children, nor would it be a book that they would probably let them read if they read it first. But for parents that are a little bit less restrictive, it might be helpful for kids to read this and to see how a healthy and a non-healthy sexual relationship kind of go. It's a quick read, honestly. Um, it maybe take you an hour, an hour and a half. It took me a little bit long just because when I read poetry, I like to read it a couple times just to kind of grasp all the thought and meaning that kind of went into it and there's a ton of meaning that went into all this stuff with all that being said i would totally suggest reading dirty pretty things if it's a rainy day curl up with this book full of sexual undertones and awkward encounters involving people's clothing either on them or off why not but seriously it's a great read to go buy at barnes and noble 10 out of 10 would read again I've already read it four times, but what is one more time on top of that? Okay, cool. Thank you so much for listening in on my first vlog. I appreciate it. Bye!